This is a MacBook Pro A1989. It's the 2018 13-inch version, and it has no power. As you can see, the screws have been removed. This came from another shop, so they've done some of that work for me. Um, what we're going to do first of all is see what happens when we plug in a charger. So fortunately, this is USB-C. We can get some information here by connecting to any of these ports. So on the back port on the right hand side we are getting 5 volts and 0.4 amps and I bet it's like that on every port because this is probably going to be a short possibly in the charging system maybe somewhere else. 0.4 there again and I bet we got the same thing over here We'll take a look down inside these and then we'll pull the back panel off and see if anything makes itself apparent. Alright, so if I look down in this side, well, it's very bright, but uh, looks like these might have been cleaned already. Not perfect, but I don't see any indication here of severe moisture damage, although that's still possible. Okay, so I don't think this has been fully disassembled before. At least it doesn't look like it. Alright, let's go ahead and get this plugged in and we are going to take a look at F7000 and that's where we can find our ppbus underscore g3h. Alright, let's get the meter so we can see what's going on here. Okay, so we are getting 12 volts right there which would still make me think we're probably going to have an issue with the charging system. Alright, so looking into the microscope over on the right hand side, which would be the left, if I flip this thing open everything looks pretty clean. I thought this looked a little foggy or something. Nothing major. But over here on the left hand side, different story. We've got signs of corrosion here inside the charge port. You can see that this CD32 has got corrosion on the outside of it. So probably going to have a charging system issue that's causing this. Now it could be something as simple as this being uh, too dirty. So we're going to have to pull the board out obviously and take a look. Uh, down here we've got corrosion as well. So I'm not sure how extensive it is but it looks like it came in on this side and hopefully there's not too much on the flip side of this board. We'll find out in just a minute. I'll go ahead and get this thing out. Yeah, so we've got signs of corrosion on both sides of this logic board. Uh, so I'm going to start by just cleaning this up so we can kind of get a better look. A lot of times you'll see residual stuff like this just kind of left over and if you clean it off it hasn't necessarily done any damage so we want to find out which components really were affected by the moisture. I started out by probing some suspicious looking components on the board and it turns out this area right here has developed a short on PP3B3 underscore G3H underscore RTC. This charge port was looking pretty bad too so I'm going to clean it up and see if we can go ahead and reuse it. Worst case scenario we might also have to replace this. All right, here is our suspicious looking capacitor. I'm going to put some free spray on here and then plug in the charger. Just for demonstration purposes. And 
again that's going to be trickier than I thought. Right, let's try that again. And there you go. Alright, so that is bad for sure. We'll go ahead and start by removing this one. Well, let's say remove and replace. And with any luck, we won't have to replace the charging ICs also. And it looks like we got a little, little bit of that glue that Apple loves to use so much. So we'll probably have to clear this stuff off. Yeah. I don't know why they do that. I guess it's to underfill the chip. It's bled all the way over into these areas, which makes it more difficult to remove this without causing collateral damage. All right, if I went too far there, we'll put some uh, solder mask on it. See if the tweezers can reach down in here with the help of some leaded solder and possibly some air. It's a little awkward. Yeah, we're going to need more heat get this thing off. Okay, I wanted the hot air to shut down so we could hear. Got the multi multimeter in continuity mode, and I think that side should not beep, and it doesn't. Okay, so we are, let's see what the diode number says. Okay, so we're now at 0.3, so that's good. Now, this is not looking too good either, this capacitor, so I will most likely go back and replace that but for now um, actually we'll replace those two at the same time I think because they are right next to each other and let's see what the values are on those so we are looking at CB 300 that is 10 microfarad uh, 6.3 volt 0402 and then the one right next to it I think uh, the one right next to it is going to be CB308, 
And where is CB308 on my schematics? Second one is also 10 microfarad, 6.3 volts, 0402. So these two caps are the same value. The one that was here was bad for sure. This one looks like uh, it will be bad soon enough. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that. I think that this one right here probably, oh, this one will also need to go this one. Yeah, it doesn't look great either. A lot of these I think are just, uh, well, it may just be discoloration. I don't think it's actually corrosion. So these may not necessarily be bad. Yeah, I think they just got some crap on the outside of them. So we can, I'll reflow that with some solder later on. If those shine up a little better, we'll probably leave them. But you can see this one is actually physically damaged. We're missing part of the contact here. So we'll go ahead and take this one off, replace those two, and then hopefully we will have a functional charging system. It's a bit of an awkward angle. Let's flip this thing around. Alright, that came off a little easier. Blow that lead on there. Get the rest of this crap off. And we'll get some solder mask down on those areas where I scraped a little too far. Just to be safe. Okay, I think we're ready to go. I'm going to flip the border. Oh, actually I missed a little spot there. Okay, I think we are ready. And we'll need some flux, but we'll also need to put something on this mat so that it doesn't bubble up on me. Because these blue silicon mats, well, that's a lot of flux. These blue silicon mats only take so much heat before they start to warp. Okay, I think that'll work. We're actually elevated, so that's fine. Couple of caps. don't want to get this too hot so I'm gonna cover this up a little just so it's not in the direct line of fire from the hot air Ah, 
Ah, I didn't know that was open. Get out here. All right, that's going to cause some airflow issues because of this channel. All right. That ought to do the trick. At least for those. And I just noticed something. Are we missing? Are we missing something right here? I think we might be. I think this right here used to be something. Maybe, maybe not. No. Actually, I think that's just corrosion. I'll check that on the schematic as well. I don't think that actually had anything there, but let's double check just to be safe. And that is RB036, which apparently is no stuff, which means they planned to put something there and then they didn't. So we're not missing anything. And I'll just double check these and make sure we have good value still. That nothing went wrong in the process. All right, so I've got, uh, let's see, got 0.358 over here. 0.446 there. I think it's time to see if the charging system is working. Okay, let's plug it in again. Oh, that's the tricky part. Got to make sure I don't unplug this on the bottom at the same time. But if you keep an eye on the meter, you will see that we are pulling 20. Okay, we got 20 volts, and we're pulling 0.1, 0.2. 0.5 and I think we are back in business okay not a full reassembly but should be enough to show us something uh, including whether or not this battery is any good because that's another thing that I'm a little concerned about plug it in nothing on the fans nothing on the screen although this battery would be quite dead at this point well we got fan spinning that was interesting we had fans for a second and we have an apple there we go I know it's upside down I might have to blur this out anyways but it does appear to be booting now the question is whether or not the battery will accept a charge because some of these will turn on even with the dead battery which I'm convinced that this one is dead are we going to be stuck on an apple forever? I don't know some things for sure we need to clean this screen up oh, there we go, looks like we booted and we are not charging the battery so I believe this battery will need to be replaced but we have signs of life and uh, we'll have to order a battery now so I'm gonna leave this just for the heck of it I, I really don't think that it's going to improve let's see I don't think this will improve I think the battery is shot it's pretty common with liquid damage but uh, we shall find out